Yeah, I can see now. Thank you. So Amarjit, myself, Nitin Kumar Singh, I'm working as a director of technology here and uh, taking care of multiple projects into multiple domains mm -hmm. and uh, like IoT, big data, cloud computing okay. and uh, so forth. Mostly on the back end, uh, uh, back end side. Okay. So, yeah, let me also talk about the company and the project. Mm -hmm. So, so we have collaborated with a company called Stalentis. Stalentis is a product company located in Bangalore, and it's into an automotive domain. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they have come out with a new project into uh, connected vehicle domain services. <laughs> And uh, it's a long term project. Client has a long term vision uh, in this project. Mm -hmm. And uh, initially, it will be more than like close to 130 people team. And it will further evolve uh, as we have more and more use cases in the next phases. Mm -hmm. So, in this, there will be a separate, separate sub teams. Like, for example, uh, one team will be responsible on uh, the embedded side development. Uh, on the vehicle, other okay. team will be responsible for designing infotainment system uh, HMI app. The, there will be a, a big team for uh, cloud platform services mm -hmm. and designing various components and uh, implementing them. Then we will also have a portal team for to design dashboards. And uh, in future, like in the next phases, we will have AI, ML, mobile applications, and so forth. So this will evolve with time. And uh, currently, uh, we are we do have a lot of different different openings in the various teams which I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So now, uh, Amaljit, you can start with a brief introduction about yourself, your technical competencies on which you have hands-on experience, project and company experiences, and then probably we can uh, like uh, discuss few more uh, topics in the detail. Sure. So sure. thank you for asking. My name is Amaljit. Uh, Kumar, mm -hmm. I am having seven plus years of experience. So currently I am doing Java development. So the technology which I am using is a Java with a Spring Boot microservices, a Spring Cloud component as a backend. Front end, some mm -hmm. of the exposures as Angular 9. Also, I have a good experience in AWS cloud services. And apart from this uh, database, which I have, I like uh, MongoDB and Oracle uh, as a uh, database experience. Coming for the DevOps, which is I am using for the development as well as monitoring the application. So the using uh, DevOps tools, which is like uh, Apache, Maven, Jenkins, Jira, GitHub, ELK, Splunk, and all. And uh, I have also good experience in the domain perspectives like uh, banking, telecom, e-commerce, and health insurance. So the current project mm -hmm. which I am working that is based on the health insurance. Uh, so here we are following Azine. Uh, so based on the sprint, we need to work. So whatever the task will be defined through the Jira and all, we need to work. So mostly my role and responsibility for this current project. Uh, current project is nothing but basically to manage the health for the particular uh, customers. Like if any customers want to take any type of health insurance, you can take it in uh, the portal. Uh, and after that, we will process the data, make, manage the data, and then we will send the notifications and all. We'll do the payments and all. So that type of microservices mm -hmm. will be there, which need to be involved. So my role and responsibility here, like we are need to develop a microservices based architecture uh, to develop a end-to-end uh, -end functionality for the particular microservices and all. Apart from this also, uh, we need to expose third-party API by using uh, REST template or maybe Kafka mm -hmm. messaging go through that. Uh, handle uh, mm -hmm. so this type of development I am doing on daily basis uh, and once the development will be completed then we need to uh, go for the different uh, deployments with the different different environment so while it going for this production deployment so in that cases we need to involve in the productions uh, to check all those configurations changes whatever we have done from our side so that our productions uh, uh, deployment will go as smooth we can verify all the configurations and log message which we have printed in that uh, so that will be proper and on that we can verify and once the deployment will completed then we have to test and monitor the application so our deployment will go like a uh, faster and a smooth if any uh, things will be there then we'll have a hot deployments mm -hmm. and all will happen immediately like that so this type of things i'm doing on daily basis <coughs> in the current project okay thanks amarjit for the detail you shared with me <coughs> your total experience is seven plus years right yeah Okay, and uh, how much is the relevant in Java? Uh, Java, I have seven years same. Okay, and what version of Java you have used recently? Mostly I use Java 8 and 7. Hmm. Okay, any exposure with the newer version of Java? 
Java which version? Sorry? Uh, Java 7 and oh, 8 I worked. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, now, now you are. Yeah. So, oh, I was asking like any exposure with a newer version of Java? Uh, not yet right now, only till 8 I used. Uh, okay, no problem. What about Spring Boot? How much experience? Uh, experience Boot, mostly Spring Boot and microservices. I have 5 years of experience. Kafka, Mongo, I have 3 years. AWS also hmm. have 3 years. Okay. So can you tell me like what all services you have worked on on AWS? Uh, AWS mostly have used uh, SNS, SMS, uh, it, uh, Elastic Beanstack, EC2 Instance, uh, S3 Bucket, CloudWatch uh, and IM users. These I, I use mostly on the frequently. Okay. Okay. Any exposure with the IoT domain? Uh, IOT, uh, not yet. Uh, some of idea I have, but uh, mm -hmm. haven't used or worked. No problem. Uh, okay, so coming on to Java, uh, Core Java. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me, like, can we have a static class in Core Java? Yeah, we can uh, make it a static, uh, a static class in Core Java. Hmm. Uh, if you want, you can make it, but if you will use the static class, then I think it's not required in Core Java static class. Why is that so? Uh, because the static will be loaded at the once the classes will be loaded. So if you have declared simple classes, then uh, that classes will be loaded at the time of compilations. And uh, static also will have uh, at the time of compilations all the static methods. No, but static. my question is, can we have it or not? It is not required. That's a different question. Yeah, yeah, we can we can have it uh, in the static class. Are you sure about it? So that's why I think it's not required here. And I haven't seen in Java a static class and all. A static method and a block we seen a static variables we seen. Okay, so you have never used any static class in Java that you are trying no. to say. Yeah, correct. Yes. Okay. Okay, and. Uh, so we have marker interfaces in uh, Java, right? So can yeah. you tell me when exactly you will create the marker interface and how it will be used? In, Gana uh, kam karo. So Amarjit, I again lost your voice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, now it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So marker interface is nothing but inside uh, uh, we have declared the interface name, but inside <laughs> there is no method and no definitions will be there. That is called. Yeah, that is fine. So my question was. Uh, when exactly you will use it, how it is being used? Uh, suppose if you want to clone some data, uh, that is by using clonable and all. So that clone method. See, clonable is one of the example of marker mm -hmm. interface. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have to create, uh, so when, uh, like why, because see, marker interfaces are empty, right? Mm -hmm. That you agree? Correct. Then how you will use it? What's the intent of then uh, creating marker interface? Because if an interface do not contain anything, then how it is useful? Yes, uh, correct. Uh, so uh, we can say like uh, if you don't know the full uh, like uh, implementations and all, and uh, see, forget about full. Uh, see, in that case, I can create hundred of interfaces a blank interface in my program, yeah. and uh, considering I will use after five years, so that will not make any sense, right? Whenever needed, I can introduce new interface because making changes in the existing interface can create problem but introducing new interfaces is not an issue at all at any point of time yes correct so coming back to my original question like how this marker interfaces helps in that case yeah helps is like suppose we have a uh, like a, a serializable <laughs> is also a marker markup interface right so mm -hmm. uh, if you are creating any class or inside that you are extending the serializable so that class will behave like a this will be uh, from where that behavior is coming. See, uh, again, your uh, serializable, clonable, they are the example of marker interface. Mm -hmm. But th if they do not contain anything, how we come to know that what needs to be done uh, implementing those interfaces? 
hope my question is clear yes yes yeah that is clear okay okay mm -hmm. exactly i'm not sure but uh, i used uh, like this one only okay no problem so can you tell me uh, does concurrent hash map holds read write lock uh, concurrent hash map uh, will be a read write lock yeah okay but if it is holding a lock that can create a deadlock situation right uh, but then how it will become concurrent because name itself is concurrent yeah concurrent i think is uh, like uh, we can make it once we are uh, doing a concurrent hash map so that thread will be like uh, asynchronized so uh, is a non blocking and parallel as team processing will work in that cases but you said like it will hold the lock uh, uh no that will not possible because while we are doing i think so i'm still confused like what's your answer on this uh no that will not uh, lock read and write operations but hash map is uh, non synchronized right asynchronous no yeah, yeah. hash map is non synchronized but concurrent hash map then how it is concurrent in that case uh, concurrent means like uh, simultaneously we can access multiple thread uh, based on this correct stream but if, stream. if a hash map is no uh, is non synchronized uh, mm -hmm. and if concurrent hash map is kind of synchronized and you said it is not holding law then again then it will be an issue right uh, uh, multiple threads can access the same data or they can tweak or update right then it will yeah. be a dirty read kind of situation mm -hmm. so how that is being handled because these are standard uh, interfaces provided by uh, java specifications right so yeah. those will handle those things but mm -hmm. logically <clears throat> yeah can you tell me about it like mm -hmm. Okay, uh, no problem. So on, uh, okay. So coming on to uh, AWS services, so we worked on S3, right? So suppose you have a, one S3 bucket mm -hmm. and uh, it contains millions of uh, data text files. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. Now the question is you need to do a lookup or search based on the content of those files. Like for example, you need to search hello world in all of those files. Mm -hmm. So what is your recommended optimized approach? Optimize means it should be cost effective as well as time effective. Mm -hmm. One approach I can uh, easily, anybody can think of just uh, read that bucket uh, and uh, file by one by one, parse it and just search, right? So that will not work because it will be uh, costly because you are transferring the file content at some other location. Also, it, uh, it will take time because file sizes are huge and number of file sizes are very huge. Okay. So what will be your recommended optimized approach in this? In that cases, I can, we can go for this, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, while we are storing, uh, the data in S3 bucket, so that will be in the compressed and with the unique ID will be created. But, uh, what we will do for the ID, uh, because, uh, if the text files are already there, right, mm -hmm. we need to search based on the content of the file, each file. Yeah, I think internally they are calling some algorithm uh, while storing the data in S3. So, uh, based but what on... you, how you will use it? Uh, from where you will search? Uh, how you will search that? Definitely there will be some indexing and uh, yeah. they will have internal, right? But how you will use it as a user? Because that's a very simple use case, right? Uh, doing the search and look up in the S3. Yeah. Hello. Yes. 
yes um oh, uh, uh, okay okay uh, one question on lambda okay. so you you worked on lambda right uh lambda mostly i use sns sms s3 ec2 elastic bins and all right right but you have created lambda functions or not lambda i created uh lambda okay. functions I created for that so one question on lambda like suppose uh, your lambda function while processing is getting terminated due to some xyz error right mm -hmm. now you want to retry that lambda again automatically if it fails without any external intervention on any external service how you will achieve that okay so while we are creating a lambda in aws console so in that cases we'll uh, like uh, we'll have options while we are creating as a retryable so suppose uh, the conditions will fail or not uh, create so have you uh, have you done that so Do that we has, we have such that. option uh yeah there i think uh, one options will be there uh, retryables or okay okay so amarjit let's do a small coding exercise mm -hmm. uh so can you please share your screen and open notepad okay just a minute sure sir It's fine. Yeah. Are you able to see? So, yeah, I can see. So now the problem statement is you have to write an API in Core Java. Only the API. No need to write any other additional class and all. So this API will take list of integers as input, and in return it will return boolean flag. Okay. okay. List of integer as a input. List of input integers. and. Uh, return will be boolean flag the condition would be if all the numbers of this integer list are mm -hmm. odd mm -hmm. return true else false okay, okay. Mm -hmm. if all now, the numbers is is one catch uh, like all the numbers are odd uh, then okay. return true else false else false okay no the only catch here is this list of integers is too huge it can have billions of numbers mm -hmm. right so now you have to write an api considering these uh, which will be uh, in a optimized code okay hope my question is clear to you yes yes okay 